Welcome back everyone to Squid Junction number 48. I am Lily Gravy Bread. You can call me Lily and I'm here with Riley. How are you today? I'm very excited for this set that we have in front of us right now. I'm still doing quite good. And yes, we are moving on to winner's round five, colloquially known as winner's semifinals. So whoever wins this going on to winner's finals. And we've got a good one here. It is going to be Last Resort versus Grimace Shakers. So Last Resort really doesn't need much of an introduction. They are one of NA's kind of top level teams at the moment, featuring Prochara, Arashi, Storm Hero, Mecha, so on. And Grimace Shakers, kind of interesting. They were kind of born... Well, I don't really think they were born from the ashes of, so to speak, but they were kind of like a reincarnation of the team 1-2 Buckle My Shoe, which, you know, good to see the consistently awful branding. No, I'm just kidding, y'all are fine. <laughs> but yeah, this is kind of a really rising kind of high mid-level team. So, you know, I'm excited to see how they kind of stack up against Last Resort here, because, you know, they've been improving steadily as of late. Yeah, absolutely. I remember over the last uh, however many months always seeing 1-2 Buckle My Shoe, uh, somewhere somewhere at the top of those weekly tournaments as well and seeing them back as grimace shakers i'm curious to see um how they play against last resort in this best of five set that we have to watch uh yes most definitely uh looking more into the roster of grimace shakers i recognize uh king ja uh, I've played with this guy before, like, years ago, mainly because he's, like, mutual friends with someone I know. And he's a really strong kind of V-roller one-trick. So, you know, love to see, kind of in the same vein as Octobrush, kind of pushing those, like, kind of solid, but, like, still solidly off-meta weapons. Uh, you know, definitely not sure if Last Resort really expects that. But you also just kind of have other strong players such as Michiru and uh, Stan who kind of come through with the Squeezer and the uh, Stamper respectively. So regardless, we're moving into Hagglefish Market. We've got the Wiper and Rapid Deco and the Wiper Deco from uh, Stan as well. And the Ballpoint as well, which, yeah, you know, that's not really, not really surprising, but still also Michiru on the V-Slasher. Absolutely, Bullpoint point as staple in this meta. I'm curious to see how they make this roller work for them because, you know, um, having to have a roller here on Splat Zone, especially one with a special that doesn't really paint all that much, can be a little bit tricky. You really have to make uh, your rest of your team comp work around that. It does look like Lost Resort have been able to uh, push the points down to 83, but Grimace is always already coming in pretty strong um, to retaliate, especially with those try strikes to hold that zone. They are going to have to uh, watch out for that flank, but they do manage to get a pick on Prochara right there. Arashi picking them off once again with the Wiper, looking for another pick as well. Um, Lost Resort still has lead, and they are are just going to be setting up their front line, setting up all the power that they can on uh, Grimace Shaker's plat here to hold this lead and keep it going for them. Yeah, very true. Uh, two down on Grimace Shaker's yet again. Not really a position you want to be in, even when you have the missiles and the inkjet ready. Fenboy 2 here uh, pops it and isn't really able to get much done because you have Chara and Mecha able to kind of hold up the backside of the zone very well, but that's two down on Last Resort here, and uh, Grimace Shaker's trying to create some sort of entry. Zone is very close to being neutralized, but unfortunately, both Ja and Stan go down at kind of an unfortunate time. Michiru and Fenboy2 trying to paint Zone as hard as possible. It's very close to being neutralized here. They're really trying to make something happen. The triple strikes come through at just the right time, and they will slap Last Resort with a huge penalty. Yeah, but going two down in the process as well, this is still going to be perhaps an opportunity for them to keep control of this zone, but they are getting pushed out by Last Resort as well. Now, Grimace Shakers doesn't have a lot of painting power. Um, I guess, like, when you're up against uh, a team with an end zap, you know, end zap can paint pretty well, uh, all things considered, but, you know, at least having those strikes there to um, flip the zone where they can definitely going to be what they're going to have to be playing for. Looks like, actually, that... 
Roller coming in with a pick Vab and also going down um, to last resort. It looks like they're still going to be having these, uh, these, winning these fights here. Two players down on last resort still, and they're slowly moving up and getting control of their plan as well. Still staying alive through the entire process. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. We cannot glance past what just happened there. Chara getting, like, he was all up in Jahim's business, and mm -hmm. he was right about to get the kill, but he threw out the Uno reverse card. It's just like, that was a ridiculous direct. But Grimace Shakers, no penalty. They're looking pretty solid right now, but the Inkjet coming out, trying to apply a lot of pressure. Grimace Shakers are throwing everything and the kitchen sink out in order to hold controlled zone, but they won't quite hang on, and they're staring down a 2v4 situation. But they are able to bring down two members of Last Resort as well, and that's kind of a delayed three down now, so they just have to cap zone, and they can possibly hang on here. Yeah, I'm excited to see what Grimace Shakers can do here, especially when they start setting up their bubble in a strong position, because, you know, once you have those bubbles um, set up in the most annoying spot possible for Last Resort, that can definitely throw them off a little bit and help them to get the picks that they need. Looks like we're seeing um, Fanboy2 coming out with the Inkjet here, trying to at least hold them back, perhaps looking for a pick, uh, seeing if they can get it. Looks like they they don't really manage to, but at least having that pressure there um, oh, is going to down. help them retain three down. Also in Lost Resort, this is going to be um, a very close game if they can win this. Jahim, like, okay. Mecha got two down right at the very end. Jahim was able to stop it, but they got a little bit too distracted, and that's Last Resort coming in and taking zone just in the nick of time. But Grimace Shakers have come right in and taken it back yet again. Just a minute left in this game. Zone's pretty split right now. I can't imagine Grimace Shakers feel very comfortable. They just went two down for just a moment here. Last Resort has control of zone. They're kind of getting all the picks they need at the moment, and they have the beacons as well, so... I don't know. This is looking kind of hairy right now for Grimace Shakers, but Last yeah. Resort just went two down yet again. Mm hmm They, they, uh, Jaw did trade there, so this is going to be a slightly tricky for them to get back in. Last Resort is coming out. Storm on the Inkjet once again, getting a great pick, but also being pressured and getting taken out by Jar as well, which is uh, pretty fantastic to see. We're seeing how um, Grimace Shakers can try and desperately get this zone back for them, trying to push them out, but and it looks like uh, we are seeing actually a desperate fight for mid in these last few seconds. Last Resort does manage to cap it and win the game in the last blink of an eye. Uh, yeah, that was such a close game all around. Uh, Last Resort kind of came through really strong in the beginning, but, you know, they never really gave up. But still, that was an incredible effort from Grimace Shakers. Ja really came through and got a lot of really good picks for them. But unfortunately, I think they just kind of didn't have the manpower they need to kind of seal the deal when it was really important. But still, like, that's the kind of loss that you take, and you've got to feel pretty confident. Like, yeah, we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. So I'm interested to see how they will do on uh, score training here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if... If I was in uh, Grimma Shaker's position there, I would be, I'd be buzzing. I would be buzzing, not just from, uh, not just from having a really close game, but you know, being able to come back from such a big lead that um, uh, Last Resort was able to get throughout most of that game there as well. Being able to consistently get them maybe two players, even three players down for quite a lot of the game, making that, making that uh, game so close by the end as well, so uh, absolutely hats off to Grimace Shakers there for being able to pull that off. Uh, Last Resort definitely coming in with the win in the end, being able to cap that zone um, in that last fight for it. Uh, we are going to be moving on to Rainmaker on Scorch Gorge, I believe. Do you have anything to say about this? Uh, not particularly. Uh, basically... I think that this map could be a potentially pretty good for uh, Jahim's roller because you have that kind of ledge area to, you know, shark, which, you know, that's what rollers do. They shark, they kill people. Generally, it's a good time if you're not me because whatever, we all have our preferences. Don't worry about it. But yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, not to mention Rainmaker is just kind of an inherently volatile mode. So I don't know. I think this one could be pretty you know, hard fought as well. Like, like Last Resort would have to have like a pretty hard fought win here is what I mean. 
Yeah, I believe so. I definitely believe so. They did have a hard fought win in the first game. I, I, I definitely want to want to believe that. But you know what? This this next game, I think, I think Grimace Shakers has a really good uh, opportunity to allow uh, Jazz Shine on the roller. Having a good uh, knowledge of the map as well can really help uh, your bubble placements here. Can really help cause not just like a good strong position, but also a good distraction if possible if you're not shocking with the roll of you know i'm curious to see what does happen here after because you know anything can happen really very true not to mention uh i don't know kind of curious to see if chara will stick with rapid deco at all because like okay now rapid deco is still a very solid weapon it's been you know pretty good for as long as it's been in the game but it's funny because you'd think with the inkjet buff, you'd see it a whole lot more often, but I don't really feel like that's been the case. You basically just see a whole lot of ballpoint and a whole lot of try. And honestly, I feel like if any, like if there's going to be any niche, like inkjet pick weapon come out, people are generally going to go to Nova over Rapid, which that just kind of sounds completely preposterous to me, but... You know, those who really put time into blasters make it work really well. And, you know, Chara is the blaster man, everyone knows. But yeah, he could also go to, like, S-Blast here. I don't know, I'm fairly curious to see what comp changes, if any, we might see from Last Resort. Yeah, I'm curious as well. Um, I do expect we'll still be seeing a Storm Hero on the ballpoint. Fantastic, very strong ballpoint player, of course. Um, however, I, I do reckon that uh, having any switch-ups can definitely throw a spanner in the works in terms of what Grimace Shakers might be uh, trying to expect if they still try and run the same kind of comp, the same kind of like slightly off-meta choices that they that they do manage to make work for them really well. So, um, however. Uh, I have to imagine that maybe some players are being subbed out at the moment. Uh, there might be a bit of delay here going into this game. Uh, right. But yeah, uh, Grimace Shakers, I mentioned before that they were kind of, you know, a revamp of some variety of 1-2 Buckle My Shoe. And um, that team, they won SOS... I believe on more than one occasion. I know they did it at least once. So, you know, that kind of shows what kind of skill level they're operating at. Mm -hmm. uh, incidentally, I think the player I know from that team the most is NM, and they left. So that's kind of strange, but it just is what it is, really. But you know, as it stands, like, people I think are going to inherently be more familiar with uh, Last Resort. So, you know, you love to see kind of these lesser like i hate to say lesser teams but you know i guess the underdog here come in and put on a good show oh yeah and they're definitely putting on a great show that is for sure um grimace shakers as we saw in that first game was definitely able to hold off last resort i reckon they're definitely gonna be using this time uh to really be thinking about okay so we lost that first game it was a close one. We were able to hold them off for that long, even when they had lead, and we could make this score extremely close by the end. Um, so here, they're definitely going to be thinking about like what kind of things going to do to actually to actually get that edge on last resort. We did see in that first game, however, last resort were able to make a really successful um, first push and last push actually, like um, <laughs> when they were when they were capping the zone at the end um, as the as their last resort to win it. But, um, pardon the pun, but Gr Grimace Shakers uh, definitely, I reckon, would be able to uh, work around what Last Resort might be trying to do if they manage to uh, create a really strong opening push once again. I do think Grimace Shakers would be able to make a another one of those turnarounds if they don't manage to get a first push in here as well. Um, I'm curious to see what does happen though. Uh, as you were seeing, these are still very, very strong players. It's still a very strong team. If you've been winning uh, SOS more than a more than a couple of times, then you know you're doing very, very well for yourself as a team. Uh, potentially going for top level, if not already. I'm excited to see what happens uh, in their future anyway. Me too, for sure. 
But yes, uh, confirmation. We have uh, confirmation that uh, Mecha might have, like, we might need a sub on the set of Blast Resort here. Uh, looking at the roster, I kind of didn't mention this before, but they have Slacker and also Kyo on their roster. So, you know, if Kyo comes in to sub, that's going to be, like, Blast Resort's chances of winning kind of just going straight up. Not to, you know, take anything away from any of the regular members, but, you know, Kyo is the king of NA, as they say. So, you know. Yeah, we'll just be waiting to see what happens at this point. Right. Uh, as it stands, though, uh, kind of looking deeper into the set here, like, you also have to consider Mako Clan Blitz. The, like, you know, that's just kind of a... Mako Mart is a map that... Uh, Mako Mart yeah, is uh... just kind of one of those Splatoon 2 maps that everyone's accustomed to. Yeah, it is. Um, I have to say though, uh, Mako Clams is it's it's a funny one. I th um, it's going to be great for Roller, of course, because you're going to be playing around those ledges. But you know, um, it's got one of the shortest routes from one boss hit to the other in the game. It can be so hectic here. Um, there are some really good spots to definitely flank around and get some get some clams in if you have the opportunity to do that as well. So. Definitely can be fun for that if you have the support, if you have the uh, the distraction going to stop the other team from noticing that, of course. But, you know, definitely a fun map mode to play, I believe. Even if it is one of the more hectic ones. Kind of in some ways, it's not quite the same level of, of chaos as Mahi Clams. But because of how small that middle area of the map is, um, it has almost that feeling. To it, which and I'm a big I'm a big fan of my plans myself. I mean, I kind of agree with like the hecticness. I think that makes it fun. Uh, just kind of any map that's like that is good. But like Mahi clans to a lesser extent, but yeah, I definitely agree. But regardless, uh, it seems we have kind of a roster situation sorted out. Uh, we do have, you know, people coming back in the lobby. So the game will be beginning relatively soon here. Uh, for what it's worth, uh, looking on the other side of the bracket right now, on the other match in winner's semifinals, for the record, we have... It was half send going up against you should fight that cop, which is kind of a good name. <laughs> yeah, uh, it looks but... like we are going into the game now at the yeah. moment uh, with uh, Last Resort and Grimace Shake. It looks like they are going to be bringing out the roller once again. Um, curious to see how this turns out for both teams. Actually, uh, with Arashi playing the Wiper Deco, we're seeing a Wiper Deco from Stan as well um, on the same. Uh, same wavelength, I believe. It does look like Grimace Shakers manages to get the pop. They're still kind of a little bit backed up, especially with uh, with that inkjet coming out. And also one player going down, it looks like, unfortunately. And another player pro child going down on the side of Lost Resort as well. Um, it's it's definitely a bit of a neutral game here. They're trying to just find an opening, but it does look like Lost Resort does actually have control over mid at that point and manages to only get 1.2 points. Maybe four points on the table for them, just waiting out those strikes before they can start pushing up and getting control. A very safe passageway for that checkpoint, um, just so long as there's no bucket coming around and picking you off. Looks like they are being pushed out, however, by those missiles once again, and they lose the rainmaker before they can actually um, make a push over to the checkpoint. Very true. Uh, I kind of suspected that they would get kind of more mileage out of that push. They were able to stop it just short of a uh, checkpoint here. But yeah, this looks like it's going to be a lot bigger, but sure enough, uh, the ballpoint player here, who I have confirmed is uh, Ari for Grimace mm -hmm. Shakers, thank you chat, is uh, able to put a stop to that push very quickly, only letting them get one more point out of it. They do have the Inkjet yet again, but Chara putting out a lot of pressure with that uh, Rapid Deco. Uh, 
Grimace Shakers does have the man advantage here. They're opting to just let Rainmaker reset and try and slowly but surely take mid back here. Rainmaker pop and the triple imp strikes is going to help out with that quite a lot. That is two down for Grimace Shakers here. And I think the... Okay, both members of Last Resort are kind of stuck behind. Michiru with the Rainmaker here, just kind of waiting for a safe opportunity. They do get lead and the checkpoint here, which is more than you can say for, like, Last Resort. They don't think they've broke it yet. That's two down Grimace Shakers, but they're still in a pretty solid offensive position here. Storm Hero didn't really get much out of that inkjet from the looks of it, and it doesn't seem like anyone is willing to kind of cheese that Rainmaker and force it forward, but that is three down on the Grimace Shakers, so now Last Resort is looking like they might have a shot at checkpoint here. Yeah, they want to be able to hold a stand back from uh, being able to flank around as well. Looks like they got a little bit stuck over there um, in Last Resort's base, but Last Resort going for the checkpoint, they're setting up. Um, unfortunately, one player goes down, another player goes down inside of Grimace Shakers, but they're going to be picking up that Rainmaker going and going for it with uh, that, getting that lead as well now. There is still two minutes in the game, things can go either way, and if uh, Last Resort is still going to manage, manage to go for it through all that damage that Grimace Shakers throwing at them, it looks like they are just going to be powering through, um, unfazed by those missiles still going down, but at least, at least they have that lead for them as Grimace Shakers is slowly, slowly trying to work back out of their kind of lockout situation that they're in. Yeah, shout out to uh, Michiru on the slosher there. They were able to kind of get, I think, a clutch bomb or a clutch fall off kill to stop that push. And the members of Last Resort all just kind of tunneled in and, you know, Grimace Shakers were able to capitalize on that pretty well. Unfortunately, Last Resort does still have the man advantage here. They do seem like they have a pretty solid shot at a push here, but the missiles and the inkjet from Stan and Ari respectively kind of force them way back here and allow Grimace Shakers an opportunity to move forward here. But Arashi sharking on that ledge the way you'd expect a roller to do is incidentally keeping the roller kind of on the back foot here. Ja forced to jump away and kind of rethink their approach here as Last Resort attempts to push forward with less than a minute left in this game. Yeah, and that's less than a minute to hold lead, but also less than a minute for Grimace Shakers to be able to get back control of mid that Last Resort has had control of for basically most of the game at this point, even if Grimace Shakers did manage to get that first checkpoint on them and managed to hold that lead for a, a pretty strong amount of time. does look like the Rainmaker does explode there and is reset. This could be Grimace Shakers uh, moving forward, perhaps making use of the beacons, perhaps um, being able to get a little bit more paint, getting a great pick on the, in, around in the pit as well on Arashi. It looks like uh, Last Resort does have the um, two of their specials online, so that's something they can make use of, but Storm Hero goes down, and we are seeing, uh, we are seeing this inkjet also being forced away a little bit by Arashi, but still managed to get a pick on them, and helping them get at least a little bit more of, uh, a little bit more, a little bit more points, perhaps, as we go into overtime, but you are getting thrown off that ledge there, and having to go back into mid, this looks like, oh my goodness, this looks like they are being pushed all the way back by Last Resort at the moment as they pick up their tactical to get that final buff. But, you know, Stan's still holding on. This could be, this could be, if they manage to get a few more picks, this could be an opportunity for them to actually just go for it. But they're going to be playing patiently. At some point, the time's going to run out for them with seeing these missiles come out as well, which they are going to be dodging and slowly just inching forwards and back until finally they get picked off at the very end. I didn't even really see what killed them there, but I did see Chara come in on the top left and, you know, throw the torpedo, so that would have been pretty tough to deal with as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when they got pushed off that ledge, you gotta consider that they got pushed off into the Rainmaker free zone, so it's like... You know, that's gonna eat away at your clock pretty quickly. So like, even if you play things perfectly, you gotta play them perfectly and quickly. And, you know, that's that's a pretty tall order, so to speak. But yes, yeah. unfortunately- Yeah, Last Resort definitely in those last few seconds as well, in that overtime, uh, were able to get those missiles out as well and those uh, specials just to 
create that pressure, create that um, that barrier that is almost impossible to be able to move through. Or at least it's going to be way too dangerous to safely take the Rainmaker through there, um, which is really what the Grimace Shakers was trying to do at the end, just trying to find the right opportunity, patiently holding on, just trying to find the opportunity to just move up ahead, but ultimately couldn't find it in the end. Yes, very true. But uh, now we are staring... We are looking at the same kind of situation as last time, where uh, Grimace Shakers have got to pull off something pretty massive here if they want to move on to Winner's Finals. But again, it's Mako Clan Blitz. Now, for me, like, for my money, Mako is, like, one of the best roller maps. Like, not for V-Roller specifically, but just kind of the whole class, because it's got so many kind of small elevation differences like that. Really, all of the non-shooter aggro weapons thrive here. So I think Jaw's gonna have like a really fun time here, so to speak. But Oh yeah, yeah. if I was a roller, I'd, I'd feel like I'm in roller heaven here. But you know, if I'm up against a particularly strong team, I'd definitely be trying to work hard to make any position that I'm in just like work to my advantage anyway and being able to have enough paint around you and I feel like uh, groomers shakers definitely need to make their paint control work especially in a in a mode like um like clam blitz to me clam blitz is always one where you need to be able to have a huge amount of paint output to have your um, mobility really in your favor I feel this is match point by the way so if Grimace Shakers can reverse sweep from here that's going to be very exciting for them but this could be the this could be the game where that last resort takes takes with them takes a set with them but yeah I'm curious to see how this how this turns out for both teams as uh, we already see last resort pushing up onto the left stack and getting a good amount of control over mid as well uh grimace shakers uh not letting up still coming out with the inkjet pushing them back just a little bit prochara dropping down into breakfast they're not being able to hold control but still getting back up two plays have gone down on the side of lost resort uh prochara being pressured here does get the trade actually it does get traded by um by that wiper deco I also want to point out here that uh, Storm Hero has eschewed the ball point in favor of the Splash. So Last Resort going back lineless for this one and kind of going hard aggro. Perhaps they kind of just felt like, you know, it wasn't really working out that well for them last game. I'm not too sure. Maybe it's just kind of a map difference. I'm not really sure because, you know, Double Inkjet also really strong here. But, you know, I'm not them. They would know. Ask. But regardless, we've got mid control here in favor of Last Resort. And things are. Like, they don't have that many clans, though. Storm Hero kind of stuck here. And I guess you're invincible to try strikes when you're jumping. Good to know. And that's two down for Grimace Shakers now. Yeah, Last Resort still needs to be able to get all their clams in order. They do have a. Storm Hero does have a good amount of clams, and it does look like they do manage to actually get a power clam in and the score down. A little bit, but one player going down in the process, two players down in the process. This is a push to 64, but 62 rather, but Grimace Shakes is going to be coming back, patiently moving in just to hold back Last Resort, who is going to be respawning and stopping any further push. Looks like uh, Last Resort still has a power clam um, in mid. They managed to get, actually, Storm Hero actually goes down there. Yeah, uh, we saw both teams kind of pairing up a bit. Roller getting yeah. a nice pick. This is an opportunity to push, perhaps, but actually no, because Grimace Shakers doesn't have that many clams. Last Resort, I think, it seems like they're waiting for a jump here, but no, they do get a clam in, but I don't know if they're going to have that much of a follow-up, because they're two down. Michiru does have the tri-strikes, but I can't imagine they're in that safe a position, and indeed they're not. They're forced to jump out. But at the same time, that might not be such a bad thing, because now they're going to have it for defense, but unfortunately, no, they do go down. So now Char is going to slam that basket open and now last resort is breaking through their penalty like right away things are not looking so hot right now yeah but groomer shakers uh probably not but you know what um as three players have gone down we just saw uh last resort be able to push up all the way under the basket and make sure they had the clams going it looks like this could potentially be it with uh in in just like two minutes and that 
that looks like Last Resort takes that game uh, for themselves. And I think, you know, once they had three players down on Grimmer Shakers, with the comp that Last Resort was, was running, a backless comp, um, as you mentioned, this is just something where you can just move in really quickly and once you have that frontline presence going, it's going to be so hard for Grimmer Shakers to be able to um, get them out of the way and prevent that, prevent uh, Last Resort. Last Resort's final push all the way down to zero. Now that is very true. Now, at the very end there, I believe you saw that there were like, it was just Mecha left alive for the side of Last Resort, but they came in behind Michiru and Ari, and they had the two clans they needed and just didn't notice it fast enough, which is very unfortunate. But yeah, that is, that that's really all you need. That is Last Resort taking that set 3-0 but do not weep for Grimace Shakers because, you know, that, like, this set has been pretty all over the place, all things considered, as far as 3-0s go, and they definitely put in a strong showing, and I'm sure they'll continue to do the same in Loser's Bracket. Don't be surprised if you see them kind of on stream yet again, and, and just keep an eye out for them moving forward in general, because it's quite strong. Absolutely, I'm very excited to see uh, where Grimace Shakers will be going, not just in this tournament, but also after this tournament and into the future, perhaps making their way, climbing their way up the ladder, making themselves uh, one of the possible top teams to look out for as well. Um, I believe, we'll, will we be going to a break soon? Uh, we will be going to a break soon to see winners' finals, but I believe that is the end of the line for us, is it not? I think so. Well, I've had, I have to say, I've had an absolutely wonderful time commentating with you, Riley, and I do have a question for you right now. Um, where can we find you? Well, you YouTube? can find me on Twitter at Buff Splashdown. Uh, at this point, you're more likely to hear me commentate than you are to see me tweet anything because, you know, I got stuff to do. But, you know, uh, I'm funny sometimes if you want to follow me or something. I don't know, but you know, I exist. Uh, where can the people find you? Uh, once again, you can find me on Twitter at LilyGravyBread. I'm often on there doom scrolling, whatever. I'm liking art, sharing things. But you can also find me on Twitch at LilyGravyBread as well. I stream uh, a few times a week. And uh, always, always happy to see you around as well. Uh, it's been fantastic commenting with you. I've had an absolute blast. But that is going to be it from us. And uh, we'll be going to a break and sending you off to another pair of great commentators coming up next. Yeah, definitely stick around. It's going to be great. You'll be hearing from uh, Saf and Genie. So, you know, thank you all very much for watching. Thank you to the TOs for making this tournament possible. And thank you to the players for making it fun to examine. So, yeah, have a great rest of your evening. And don't go away. Have a good one.